Most gamers today have at least heard of Sephiroth and know that he was the leading villain in 1997's fan favourite Final Fantasy VII. He has since become one of the most iconic antagonists in video gaming history. But who was he really? And why was it that he hated the world so much? What was this strange connection he had with the peculiar entity known as Genova? Over the course of this mini-series, we're going to begin by unpacking these questions and more. If you enjoy this episode and want to support my work, please do hit the like button and subscribe to the Fuzzfinger Gaming channel. Before going any further, I guess I should point out the obvious. This video is going to reveal massive plot spoilers for Final Fantasy VII. If you are unfamiliar with the game, you may wish to switch to a new video now. I've personally recorded a complete playthrough of the entire game, which I'll link to in the video description. Some of you may prefer to check that out first. Right, so now I'm going to safely assume that those of you still watching are happy to continue and actually want to be here. So let's begin by unwrapping the surface level information about Sephiroth that at least most players will come to understand themselves as they work their way through the game. We as the player are first introduced to Sephiroth without actually meeting the character. Instead, we witness the trail of destruction left behind in his wake after the Shinra Tower is decimated and its company's president murdered. Cloud, the game's player-controlled hero, happens to see the fabled Masamune Blade penetrated through President Shinra, and it begins to dawn upon him at this point just who is responsible, and that thought terrifies him. The way that the game presents Sephiroth to the player in this way is a tremendous level of storytelling because not only does it create suspense, but it also creates a certain level of mystery in the person that's playing the game since they don't know what quite to expect. They know that Sephiroth is going to be some powerful villain, but other than that, everything else is hidden from them at this time. For now, let's just pause and reflect for a moment before we go a little bit deeper. You see, it's unbeknownst to the player at this time that there is actually a ton of backstory that has led to this in-game event. And much of this story actually completely changes the perspective of what exactly has just happened and why. You see, our story really begins in the past. And we must travel back several millennia, in fact, to a point where Final Fantasy VII's planet, known as Gaia, is inhabited by a thriving race known as the Cetra. You see, the planet itself is depicted as an actual living entity in its own right, and the Setra, who were a strongly spiritual people, had learned the secret to communicate with it. After speaking with the planet, the Setra began to believe in a mythical promised land, a place supposedly brimming with the planet's own life force known as Mako Energy, or Lifestream, and that at the end of their journey they would reach this heavenly place, where they would live with the planet together as one forevermore. Some fans have theorised that the Setra are actually an alien race of migrants that discovered Gaia on their journey through the cosmos. This popular theory is based upon a line of dialogue that Sephiroth himself speaks to Cloud during a moment of exposition. He says, This planet originally belonged to the Setra. Setra was an itinerant race. They would migrate in, settle the planet, and then move on. It is worth noting, however, that some who can read Japanese have said that the original language dialogue is somewhat unclear, and this line by Sephiroth may just be a poor English translation. The Setra could very well be a human race. The Setra, who later became known as the Ancients, moved into their own settlements where they thrived for some time. However, 2,000 years before the start of the game, a cataclysmic event takes place that changes everything. A shape-shifting extraterrestrial known as Genova arrived on Gaia after crash landing on the northern continent with a meteor. It created an impact site that became a focal point within the game itself, and in fact a large portion of the final parts of Final Fantasy VII revolve around it. Since the planet is itself a living creature, this site became a devastating wound that weakened Gaia's abilities to self-heal. Genova was able to climb out of the crater, and it soon discovered the Cetra settlements. It infiltrated their groups, where it began to read their memories and manipulate them into thinking it was actually their own dead loved ones. Once Genova was able to get close to the Cetra, it began to infect them with its own cells, 
a kind of alien virus which began turning them into hideous monsters. Think of The Thing crossed with X-Files. However, the Setra were able to fight back and managed to imprison the alien back within the crater from which it first crawled. Here, Genova remained for the next 2,000 years until virtually all knowledge of its existence became lost to the planet's inhabitants. Now, let's fast forward much closer to the present day, and we have the formation of the Shinra Electric Power Company. Originally established actually as a weapons developer, the Shinra Company began to experiment with the planet's life stream, and quickly realised its potential as a valuable energy source. Shinra began to sell their newly harvested energy, and very quickly grew to become a mega corporation bent on world domination. Eventually, the Shinra company became the conquering force not only in energy, but also in military, media, space exploration and politics, influencing and controlling all aspects of people's lives. Around 30 years prior to the start of Final Fantasy VII, the Shinra company excavated the northern crater and discovered the remnants of Genova and recovered them. Mistakenly, one of their lead scientists, Professor Gast, believed the organism to be the remains of a Cetra, whom by this point were now referred to as the Ancients. This makes sense since, for many, as far as they were concerned, the Cetra were now extinct, they were just an ancient race. On top of their discovery of Genova, Shinra had also learned rumours of the Promised Land, and believing it to be a place bursting with money-making Mako, they began to experiment with the Genova specimen as their means of finding it. Since they believed Genova to be a Cetra, they concluded that by injecting its cells into human guinea pigs, they could eventually create, through trial and error, a super ancient that would be able to lead them into this mythical land by communicating with the planet. For a while, Professor Gast conducted his research alone, but eventually Shinra decided to put more investment into the project, and he was joined by Professor Hojo and a biotechnologist called Lucretia. As the three worked closely together on the newly formed Genova project, Hojo and Lucretia began a relationship, and Lucretia became pregnant with his child. Still dedicated to their work and research, Hojo believed that by implanting Genova DNA into their unborn son while he was still in an early development stage, they could increase the likelihood of succeeding in forming an ancient. Lucretia agreed and the baby in her womb became Shinra's latest experiment. For the rest of her pregnancy, Lucretia was in terrible pain and had nightmare visions showing her the atrocities that her future grown-up son would go on to commit. Thus, the child, who we now know as Sephiroth, was born into the world. Sephiroth was quickly whisked away from his mother, Lucretia, before she even had an opportunity to hold him. He was adopted by the Shinra company, and their scientists raised him as a super soldier, and hiding his parents' true identities from him, they told him that his mother was Genova. If you want to learn what happens next, please do join me in the next episode as we continue to explore Sephiroth's tragic and destructive tale. If you've enjoyed this episode, please remember to subscribe and to hit the thumbs up button.